Conquering Anxiety, the RBD Approach Demystified Let's begin this video by conducting a rational emotive behavior therapy conceptualization of anxiety. Rational emotive behavior therapy offers a distinctive lens through which anxiety is understood. At its core, the model posits that it's generally not the situations themselves that lead to anxiety, but rather largely the beliefs one holds about these situations. In the context of anxiety, individuals tend to make inferences of threat that attribute personal significance to perceived dangers or stressors. Rational emotive behavior therapy suggests that anxiety arises when individuals interpret situations as threats to their personal domain, such as threats to life, self-esteem, or comfort. They tend to believe that an event or circumstance poses a significant risk to their well-being, desires, or capabilities or comfort. These threats are often fueled by irrational beliefs. Based on the inference of threat, an individual with anxiety forms specific dysfunctional or irrational beliefs that are largely the cause of the anxiety. Let's consider the four major dysfunctional beliefs that are typically present with anxiety. 1. Demandingness. Individuals often hold rigid beliefs that the perceived threat must not occur, setting excessively high standards for themselves or their environment. 2. Awfulizing. There's a tendency to catastrophize, imagining the worst possible outcomes should the threat materialize, amplifying the perceived negative consequences. 3. Frustration and tolerance. The belief that one cannot endure or tolerate experiencing the perceived threat, leading to an overwhelming sense of distress or discomfort. 4. Global negative self-rating. Feeling inadequate or incapable of handling the perceived threat, coupled with a broader negative evaluation of oneself and life circumstances. The conceptualization of anxiety also includes the behavioral patterns associated with anxiety. These dysfunctional beliefs tend to provoke avoidance behaviors. Individuals may engage in avoidance strategies to alleviate their anxiety or prevent the perceived threat from materializing. This could manifest as withdrawal from situations, procrastination, or other behaviors aimed at evading the perceived source of anxiety. Some individuals develop more serious forms of avoidant behavior such as serious drug or alcohol use, unsafe sexual behavior, or even self-harm. Case study. John, 32-year-old stockbroker. John, an unmarried 32-year-old stockbroker, has seen a gradual increase in anxiety over two years, significantly impacting various facets of his life. 1. Personal life. John's anxiety impedes his ability to relax or enjoy leisure activities. He avoids social gatherings and feels constantly on edge even in familiar settings. 2. Interpersonal life. His anxiety has strained relationships. He's become more irritable and withdrawn, leading to conflicts with friends and family. 3. Professional life. Once an efficient and confident broker, John's anxiety now interferes with his decision-making, causing him to hesitate, miss opportunities, and second-guess himself. 4. Recreational life. Activities he used to enjoy, like hiking or playing sports, are now abandoned due to persistent anxiety and worry. 5. Spiritual life. Although a devout Roman Catholic, John has stopped attending Mass for months due to his anxiety and feelings of being unable to focus or find solace in his faith. Let's consider three situations in which the client experiences anxiety, the form the anxiety takes, along with the associated dysfunctional or irrational beliefs. Situation 1. Professional life. Making investment decisions. Symptoms. John experiences increased heart rate, sweating, and difficulty focusing when making investment decisions. Irrational beliefs. He believes he must make perfectly accurate predictions about market trends to avoid failure. He awfulizes the potential consequences of making a wrong decision, imagining financial ruin. Situation 2. Personal life, social gatherings. Symptoms. John feels tense, experiences shortness of breath, and avoids social gatherings. Irrational beliefs. He believes he must impress everyone at the event, and if he doesn't, it's awful and indicates he's inadequate. He holds a global negative self-rating, thinking he's inherently incapable of socializing effectively. Situation 3. Spiritual life. Attending church or mass. Symptoms. John experiences a sense of dread, restlessness, and profound discomfort at the thought of attending church or mass. He finds himself avoiding religious gatherings and rituals. Irrational beliefs. He holds a demanding belief that he must feel spiritually fulfilled and connected during religious services. If he doesn't experience this, he awfulizes it, interpreting it as a sign that he's losing his faith or that something is fundamentally wrong with him spiritually. 
This links to a global negative self-rating, where he perceives himself as lacking in faith or as a failure in his spiritual practice. DSM-5 Diagnostic Criteria for Generalized Anxiety Disorder, GD John's symptoms align with the DSM-5 criteria for GD. Excessive worry. He constantly worries about various aspects of his life, experiencing restlessness and difficulty concentrating. Difficulty controlling worry. John finds it challenging to manage his worrying thoughts, impacting his daily functioning. Physical symptoms. He reports muscle tension, sleep disturbances, and restlessness due to anxiety. Let's consider a potential provisional RBD treatment plan for this client that would include cognitive, emotive, and behavioral interventions. Cognitive interventions. Identifying irrational beliefs, pinpointing and challenging John's demanding, catastrophic, and self-deprecating beliefs. Cognitive restructuring. Reframing irrational beliefs into more rational, adaptive thoughts. Emotive interventions. Emotional regulation techniques. Teaching John relaxation methods like deep breathing or progressive muscle relaxation to manage anxiety symptoms. Disputing irrational beliefs. Actively challenging and disputing irrational thoughts as they arise. Rational emotive imagery technique. Employ rational emotive imagery, REI, to vividly evoke these situations in John's mind. During sessions, John could be guided to imagine these scenarios while identifying and challenging the irrational beliefs attached to them. Through visualization, John may be able to confront the emotional impact of his beliefs and work on restructuring them. The imagery could address anxiety about making investment decisions or about attending a social gathering. Behavioral interventions. Exposure therapy, gradual exposure to anxiety-provoking situations to diminish avoidance behaviors. Behavioral activation, encouraging engagement in previously enjoyable activities to counteract avoidance tendencies. Evaluation of therapy progress. Throughout therapy, John's progress will be assessed using various measures. Frequency, intensity, and duration. Regular monitoring of the frequency and intensity of John's anxiety symptoms to track improvement. Behavioral observations, assessing John's engagement in avoided activities or situations, indicating reduced avoidance behaviors. This detailed approach integrates the core tenets of RBT in addressing John's anxiety, aiming to challenge his irrational beliefs and diminish avoidance behaviors across various life domains. Measures for assessing anxiety symptoms. 1. Anxiety Log John maintains a daily log recording situations triggering anxiety the intensity of his symptoms on a scale of 1 to 10, and the duration of anxiety episodes. 2. Symptom Monitoring Questionnaires Regular administration of standardized questionnaires like the GD-7, Generalized Anxiety Disorder-7, to quantitatively assess the frequency and severity of anxiety symptoms. 3. Behavioral Observations The therapist encourages John to note instances where he avoids or engages with anxiety-provoking situations, tracking progress and reducing avoidance behaviors. Therapy Progress Evaluation The therapist periodically reviews John's anxiety log, assessing trends in the frequency, intensity, and duration of anxiety symptoms associated with specific situations. The GD-7 questionnaire is administered at regular intervals to quantitatively measure changes in anxiety severity. Additionally, behavioral observations in session and self-reports from John regarding engagement and avoided activities serve as qualitative indicators of progress. This detailed approach tailors interventions to John's specific situations and beliefs, utilizing rational emotive imagery to confront and reframe his irrational beliefs. Regular assessment measures provide a comprehensive understanding of John's progress throughout therapy. Disclaimer. This video is intended for educational purposes only. The content provided is not a substitute for professional advice, diagnosis, or treatment. It is not intended to offer medical, legal, or psychological advice. The information shared in this video is for informational purposes and does not constitute a therapeutic relationship. Individuals experiencing anxiety or seeking mental health support are encouraged to consult with a licensed mental health professional or healthcare provider for personalized evaluation and treatment. This video does not offer a therapeutic service, and its content should not be used as a substitute for professional guidance or intervention.